Hi, I'm Liam from Batch Brewing Company, and we're back with another episode of Beer Education. Today, we're going to talk about Belgian beers. The rich history and traditions around Belgian beers, along with their wide range of styles, warrants them getting their own episode. The brewing traditions in Belgium date back long before the independent country was formed, possibly even before the First Crusade. These early beers predate the popular use of hops in beer. Instead of using hops, they added gruet, which is a blend of spices which added flavour and bitterness to the beer much like how we use hops in modern beers. The term gruet is used both to name these blends of herbs and the finished fermented beverage. While these gruets were produced in Belgium, they were also produced in parts of the Netherlands and Germany. Each producer had their own house blend of herbs that they used in their gruet mix. Some popular additions to these blends were heather, mugwort and yarrow. To this day, some modern Belgian beers still carry on tradition with using herbs and spices to flavour the beer. A great example of this is the Belgian wit beer, which commonly uses coriander and dried citrus peel. By 1000 AD, monastic abbeys were making their own beer, not only for their own consumption, but they were selling to the public. By selling these beers to the public, the abbeys were able to be financially self-sufficient, as they were required to by their monastic orders. The most popular and well-organised of these monastic orders were the Trappist abbeys. The Trappists are an arm of the Catholic Church and originate from the La Trappe Abbey in France. Following the rule of prayer and work, the Trappist monks produce artisan goods such as bread, cheese and beer. These fund the operating costs of the abbeys and support their local communities. In order to protect the integrity of these artisanal goods, the International Trappist Association was formed and currently only recognises 12 abbeys across the world that can carry the authentic Trappist product on their beers. While these 12 monastic abbeys are spread across the world, Six of them are based in Belgium, and generally when we think of Trappist beers, we think of Belgium. These abbeys are the only ones allowed to carry the authentic Trappist product seal. The Trappist Association takes this seal very seriously. In order for an abbey's beers to qualify, they must be made within the surrounds of the abbey, production must be carried out under the supervision of the abbey's monks or nuns, and lastly, all profits are to contribute to the monastic order or to their local community. Recently, the Arkell Abbey lost their certification this was due to the fact that all the supervising monks looking over the brewery had retired. Sadly, after this, the abbey was sold to private owners. After over 900 years of a rich brewing tradition, like many other places in the world, the Belgian beer industry came to a grinding halt during World War I. Upon the invasion of Belgium, all copper brewing equipment was seized by the enemy forces. The copper was used to make ammunition and weapons, and the supply of grain for brewing was heavily restricted. After World War II, many of these traditional breweries and abbeys struggled to recover. This opened the door for mass-produced lagers to become the most popular beer in Belgium and Europe as a whole. Fast forward to the 80s and 90s, and we see a renewed interest in traditional Belgian beer styles. This was due to increased demand in countries like the United States of America and Australia that saved many of these traditional breweries from shutting down. And now, let's try some Belgian beer styles. In our Sales and Wild Ales episode, we covered Lambics, Gerzes, and Flanders Red Ales. So here is the Belgian beers that we haven't covered yet. Wit beer, or white beer as it translates to in English, is a style that had almost died out by the 1950s. It was revived in 1966 with the formation of Hogarden. The Hogarden Wit is still the most popular beer of the style today. Typically brewed with up to 50% unmalted wheat, the style is also well known for its trademark addition of spices, such as coriander and dried citrus peel. Whip beers are dry, crisp, slightly hazy, really well suited for Australian summers and a perfect addition to seafood. This Blanche de Bruges from Brewery de Half Marne uses Belgium grown Magnum hops which add a really nice spiciness to the beer. Next up we have Saisons. Originating from the French Belgium Wallonia region, these rustic farmhouse ales were made with a grist that varied from farmhouse to farmhouse. Due to the questionable quality of water in those days, Farm owners would brew saisons to provide their seasonal farm workers something safe and low alcohol to drink. One of my personal favourite beer styles, modern saisons are quite dry, highly carbonated and have a unique yeast character that has a nice white peppery finish. The famous Saison de Pont has always been the classic example of the style, but in recent years it's been quite hard to get here in Australia. This Paya Saison takes a bit more of a modern approach, combining classic Belgian hops with the use of Amarillo, Cascade and Citra. And now moving on to a classic Trappist beer. As we discussed earlier, Trappist is less of a style and more a combination of abbeys that produce beer. Often these Trappist abbeys will produce a wide range of beers covering some classic Belgian styles. The most unique Trappist beer is Orval. It's actually the only beer released to public by Abbey de Orval. Orval is a strong blonde ale that is unique for its secondary fermentation with Bretomyces. Its complex flavours can be tart, bitter and fruity all at once. Depending on the age of your bottle, the flavours can age and develop over time. Many fans prefer to wait 9 to 12 months before cracking theirs open. And lastly we have the Trip L. 
The Triple L style was actually developed by West Barley in 1930 to compete with the rise of Pilsners and other lagers across Europe. These beers are quite high in alcohol, sitting anywhere between 7.5 and 9.5% ABV. The name Triple L comes from the original beer released by West Marley, as it was triple the strength of their first brew at the time. While high in alcohol, Triple L's are quite drinkable and have a nice bready malt flavour.